Hi friends, uh, hope you are all safe and healthy. It is my pleasure to have you all of with us for a discussion of future of denim washing. Uh, this discussion becomes more important since washing is such an integral part of our industry. And with the upheaval that we have seen in the markets recently, we need to evaluate if really uh, we need to study how such an important component might change if uh, uh, it may change itself or we need to make some conscious changes uh, ourselves. Joining me today for this webinar are some of the famous people in the washing industry globally and uh, most of uh, you must know them. However, I think an introduction is definitely required. Uh, so my first guest is Andrea Perego. Andrea has worked in different washing and chemical industries over his uh, career, including companies like Garmin, PVH, and ADM, etc. He is currently working as washing and treating specialist for Sem for All Mankind. Hi, Andrea. Hi. Hi, everyone. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. So, welcome uh, to the uh, webinar and the talk. Thank you. Uh, our so, second guest is uh, thank you, thank you, Andrea. Uh, our second guest is Daniel uh, Luato. Uh, Daniel is a second generation entrepreneur taking up the heritage of Elitic Group <coughs> founded by his father Luigi. He is in charge of the Tunisian operations of the group which has its headquarters in Italy and Tunisian operations of the group which has its uh, operates in Tunisia and Romania. He is the general manager of the group's uh, vertical platform Art Lab. Former philosophy and MBA student, he focuses his activities in implementing sustainability oriented practices in the washing and garment uh, making operations, preserving and promoting at the same time the Italian look signature of the LT Group products. Hi, Daniel, how are you? Hi, fine, thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you for joining us. Our third guest is Luca Braschi. Uh, Luca has dedicated 20 years of his life to fashion industry, working for chemical and innovation companies, brands and production boundaries. During the last decade, he has added an additional layer of expertise to conscious approaches, processes and products for sustainable garment finishing, production and sourcing. He runs his consul uh, consultancy firm Blue Alchemy and is currently consulting for brands like Uniqlo and J Brand. Hi Luca. Hi, hi Sandeep. Nice How are you Sandeep. doing? Very good, very good, thank you. Thank you so much for the invitation. And I'm really honored to be here together and sharing with this webinar with all these uh, important players of our industry, let's say. Thank you, Luca, you're most welcome. You. And thank you thank for, you. Thank you for uh, coming and joining us. Thank you. Our next guest is Vasco Pizarro. Vasco uh, studied marketing and is the sales and marketing director at Pizarro Laundries is in charge of the reshaping the company into a full package company. Vasco is a well-known laundry and process uh, expert over uh, and uh, Pizarro Laundries is a well-known laundry which processes over 18 million garments a year. They have several developments to their credit, including the recent one being Zero Technology with Genealogia. Hi, Vasco. Hi, Sandeep. Thanks for having me here. It's a pleasure to be uh, with all of these, of these guys. Uh, and uh, talking about and sharing our opinions and our thoughts about about the future. Thank you, Vasco. It's a pleasure to have you with us also. So in this webinar, we are trying to understand the future of denim washing. Uh, are we poised for big changes uh, from what we have been doing or we can expect some incremental changes only? To understand this, uh, we need to understand how we have progressed so far and what we have achieved in the last five years. So we begin with some questions to the panelists and try to get the views. And uh, my first question is related to what we have done so far in the last five years. So what, what are the major changes that have occurred in denim washing last three to five years and how it has affected our work? Uh, so Vasco, this is the, the question goes to you. So I, um, the, last, the last five years, I think uh, there was a, a, a huge evolution on uh, how we use uh, technolo existing technology uh, like laser, ozone, uh, uh, ice blast. Um, I think the focus uh, shifted a bit uh, on, um, of course, everyone 
one wants to design and to deliver new things. But I think the, the focus uh, was on optimization and especially on the saving uh, resources. Uh, water savings, uh, different wash methods, uh, the chemicals have been pay playing uh, an important part or, um, on substituting uh, stone or substituting PP. Uh, so it's, um, it's, a mix, it's a mix of things. I believe that uh, um, the, the, in our case, in our case, we, we, um, we focus a lot on how to be uh, optimized. As you know, uh, we are located in Portugal. Uh, normally, uh, our our uh, costs are also higher in terms of labor and energy and so on. So well, our focus on the factory was on developing new things that could not only be sustainable, but also to to deliver uh, different things, but also to to be uh, save cost. So um, it's it's a, a mix of products and how we use them. Uh, we've been very successful linking uh, different technology, for example, with the, with the laser, the ozone, the isolate, uh, the 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 zero technology now, uh, wiser wash also coming. So uh, in our case, we we that were the most significant changes besides the energy state of it. So we in our case we also uh, linked everything to to green energy. So all the factories, especially in electricity, is run. With, uh, with solar panels, uh, the, the reusing of the water has been more and more uh, important for us. We did significant changes on the energy part, and today we are saving more than 50% in, the, in, the, in, the, in terms of, of steam. So um, it's, it's a, a, a different uh, small things that add up together in a, in, in a, a big, a big uh, concerted strategy. So the basic direction is sustainability, uh, whether it's the energy saving, whether it's uh, water saving, uh, replacing stones and other technologies. So that's a major direction, definitely what uh, we are moving in. So I mean, uh, I move on uh, to Luca Rassi and uh, to have his views on the same question. Yeah, uh, let's say I partially agree with what Vasco said because it's, uh, it's true. Uh, and you're right, you mentioned three, five years because uh, all the significant changes really happened in the last uh, four or five years, in my opinion, because uh, it's, it's where all those kind of technologies really uh, are playing an important role and replacing some of the processes that have been used for decades, let's say, and now are uh, almost disappearing, completely replaced by this technology. And technology that I have to say, um, they are not so new because laser, for instance, uh, it's not a very new technology because I started working in this industry 20 years ago. And uh, at that time, only a few laundries were using lasers. And mainly just because maybe uh, they were working for Levi's, for instance, because it was, he was a pioneer on this kind of technology. But apart from that, few, few companies, they were maybe having one just to try and get the, some, some new customers with this technology. But what I noticed in and Ozone too, the same. What I've noticed in the last five years, it was an impressive acceleration of global distribution of these machines. Now, I mean, every laundry almost has one or two of these technology, investing a lot of uh, money, of course, on these. And I see also from the brand side, uh, pressure to work with, with that, that kind of technology. And uh, all the industry, in my opinion, uh, um, accelerate their investment. If I think about washing machine, just because uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a developer, so I'm working uh, and try to find out the best innovation for, for my customers in order to, to work in, a, in, in the best optimized way. The washing machine, before they were just washing. Now they are doing uh, many things in the same time. I mean, it's all in one. They can apply nano bubbles, so they can apply ozone. Uh, if you think about, uh, um, for instance, uh, uh, also all the new generation of chemicals, same. I mean, they are replacing the old chemical with that has some maybe hazardous content or something like that, replaced with a new generation. And uh, in my work, what I notice is that uh, um, 
uh, my aim is to, for instance, and synchronize, as Vasco was saying, uh, this technology together with new generation of chemical and uh, try to uh, get the best out of them. And uh, because uh, I realized that those, those technologies now are helping a lot, but uh, not, not, but just alone, only the technology are not enough to always to get uh, uh, a nice looking garment or, uh, uh, so it needs, uh, needs creativity, it needs still the human brain, let's say, to, to work in a proper way. And, uh, and I realized that uh, if you combine properly these uh, new things coming out, uh, it, uh, it, we can get uh, very good results, in my opinion. And uh, this is something that, uh, that I see. I see it that probably targets are changed. Because uh, as Vasco said, uh, before the, the targets uh, was, uh, okay, let's match uh, a target, a sample, and make it consistent in production, make it as, as similar as possible, try to reduce the production cost. Now we still, we still have that kind of target, but uh, they are more in a sustainable approach because uh, brands are also asking, uh, not anymore, did you match my sample? It's okay, the, the production is okay, but they're also asking how much water you saved? Did you use certain kind of chemicals? Did you use pumice stone? Uh, or, or potassium permanganate. I mean, now the request is different and this is changing the way to, to do production and then in production. That's, uh, that's something I realized. Yeah, and but I mean, these uh, requirements are, uh, are different for different buyers or are they almost getting similar uh, in terms of uh, sustainability requirements? Uh, sorry, didn't catch the question. I'm saying that uh, for different brands, let's say you are you also working consulting for different brands. So the requirements for most of these brands are coming to same point that they are looking for similar standards or it's uh, still a divergence? Or no, yeah. For the brands I'm working for, yes. I realized in the last uh, four years at least, uh, this is, was the main focus. I mean, this is something that is uh, it's very strong. Probably I'm working with some companies that are very sensitive in that sense. But in general, I see that this is the the trend, let's say, the tendency of all, most of the brands now. Okay. And this is affecting our work, of course. Of course, of course, of course. It's affecting all of us. So I uh, move on now to Daniel. Daniel, uh, can you share your opinion on this point? Well, I do completely agree with everything Luca said. It was a very nice and complete analysis of today's laundry ward. Uh, there has been a major shift in attention towards sustainability. Yes, and that's great. That's the future. I know it's a, it's a concept that we overuse, but sustainability, the efficient use of the limited amount of resources that we have available, it's, it is definitely the future. But this shift, uh, if, if I am allowed to, uh, poses also a couple of important risks to be considered. Uh, the first one is uh, what, I, what we call the greenwashing. Because while everybody is talking about being sustainable, maybe a little bit of too many people, too many players are claiming to be acting in the sustainability approach while we still lack a real essential uh, third party that certificate the sustainability of our processes. There are a lot of certification standards, whatever, or even self-assessment of sustainability. But this is one of the problem. Which standard, which certification reflects better the reality? This uh, if anybody is uh, comfortable with the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals of the UN, is one of the subtopics. There are so many global standards, there are so many global certification that the player, the value chain, the brand, or the consumer doesn't understand which standard he should trust. And so if a consumer just wants to buy a nice, sustainable pair of jeans, ends up picking up randomly. 
not having the tools to understand the level of sustainability of what he is buying. So there would be the need, the combined need, the combined action of all the player in the, in the industry to select a smaller range of certification, a smaller range of standards, easily communicable to the consumer because the consumer today is confused and do not want to spend half an hour just to try to understand how many liters of water he's saving buying that brand uh, or that brand or that brand. Uh, this is a huge risk. And it poses us a challenge because if you want to be certificated, if you want to be uh, to, to conform to certain standards, we need uh, another one of the SDGs of the UN, the measurements of what we do, mining data in what we do. We, just, we cannot just limit ourselves to sell bullshit, whether it's to our customer or to the final consumer, making statements out of the blue in the, written in the air. We need to get some data about what we are doing, what we are saving, how we are using our electricity, how, many, how much manpower we are, we are saving, uh, how do we contribute to a better employment of the resources that are needed for our production. And this is quite a big challenge, I think. And we are, I'm quite sure, not ready yet to solve it, to, to, to confront it at 100%. But in the moment we keep this level of confrontation in the business uh, with different player of the business talking together meeting together maybe forgetting a little bit that they are working for brand a brand b and brand c, and brand c but just remembering that they are working for this industry for the well-being of the industry maybe we can get there a little bit faster very well said uh, daniel uh, greenwashing is definitely a very big problem in an industry where um, uh, you know, it's very difficult to separate, to identify who is the right, uh, uh, who's providing the right product with the right sustainability levels because there are no standards. And this actually will be my uh, one of my questions, which I will ask the panel. I mean, I, I already put, uh, do you there are no standards or too many standards, which is the, exactly standards. the same result. <laughs> so, but yeah. do you think uh, uh, the time has come that we really need to get together and actually try to create global standards and suggest to, uh, suggest to our governments and uh, let the governments implement because these standards can only be implemented by governments as we've seen in the case of electronics. These standards are implemented well, by the government. But do you think I, this can I'm be done? I'm, Ita I'm Italian and every time I hear the government should do something, I get a little bit scared. <laughs> so I, I, I think that it's going to work much, much better if we cooperate together as an industry without waiting for the government action. Or maybe in the end we can get the government stamp, but before the solution must come from the industry, industry. must come from the professional, not from the bureaucrats. Absolutely. I yeah. agree, completely agree with you there. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with Daniele because, uh, um, yeah, he, he just uh, talk about all these kind of issue because uh, I didn't talk about that, for instance, because uh, maybe in the next questions uh, we're going to talk about that. But uh, it's true that Daniele also, for instance, 10 years ago was much worse. There were even more and uh, there, I mean, you don't, I, I was working for a chemical company, for instance, and you really don't know what could be the best certification. I have to say that in the last three, five years, uh, let's say it started a sort of uh, um, unification of uh, certification in order to, to create a, a, only few of them. It's true, there is still a lot of things to do and, uh, and give a clear direction, mostly for the industry and of course, uh, consequently for the final consumers that has no idea, of course, and this period, in this period of time are even more uncertain and need a reference. But, uh, but I see also brands that are joining together to match a certain kind of sustainable goals. These kind of things 10 years ago was not happening. Now it's happening. Yeah. It's slow, I know. But, uh, okay, we are witness of something that is happening. Of course, yeah. everything has to come faster. Sorry. <laughs> Just yeah, Luca, you are right. 
completely right because I'm now working in a brand in the past. I'm working for laundries and also chemical company with Luca. And uh, right now I saw there is a lot of certification in the market, a lot of confusion sometimes. Also today I have a chat with one of my supplier and uh, he asked me why Andrea, we have to sign another certification because they say I have a lot of certification and I need to assign another one. Why? Uh, it's not a, it's a very good question and also it's not easy to reply sometimes. Uh, with a brand, we start also like to join with a diff like a platform with different brands to share our uh, idea, share our uh, goals. And I know it's not easy, it's not uh, fast, we need time. And uh, let's see the future. I hope in the future, I hope in the, in the market and everything. For sure, what can I say? The final consumer is the last people in, the, in our industry, in, in, in our supply chain, that uh, doesn't want to understand also if the garment is sustainable or not. The, the consumer is, uh, if he likes the, the garment, the end fee and the price. And the, if it's sustainable, yes, yeah, sometimes it's good or sometimes it's not so good. Depends. This is our job to try to sell sustainable things to the consumer. Maybe without saying nothing and the consumer doesn't realize it's sustainable, but for us it's sustainable. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sandeep, sorry, if you, if you allow me. Uh, yeah. Um, I completely agree uh, with, with Daniel and Luca and Andrea on this, on this point. But I think there is also um, a lack of, of focus. Uh, many people uh, look more on the impact of the wash itself on the garment. They forget about the impact on the cotton, they forget about the impact on the thread, they forget about the impact on the fabric, they forget about the impact of the uh, um, packaging, and they forgot about the ultimate impact that is what is done with the garment after is used. Yeah. I, think, I think a lot of, of attention is also on the focus of, of those certifications that are existing. They are focused a lot on the chemicals that are used and the way that you use them on garments. There are a lot don't evaluate a full impact of the garment, not only from the, the value chain perspective, but also of the human impact of it. Yeah. So how can we say that a, a, a garment is sustainable if it is indeed sustainable in terms of water saving, but has a human impact on the way it's done, on the people that did it, and uh, uh, um, how can you assess it in a global scale? Because it is, uh, I think, the ultimate challenge, and I agree with Daniela, if the industry, and it comes to be, it comes, uh, it has to come from the industry, because uh, only the industry understands how a job that is done in one part of the world is done on the other and the impacts that it has uh, environmentally and socially. So I think uh, uh, it is, uh, um, I think, a, 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 a matter that we could talk about all afternoon. Um, I've seen a lot of, of, uh, of different opinions on this, but I agree that uh, um, the uh, a standard should be made and how uh, uh, it, it is made, it is the ultimate challenge because I believe that in the end, it's like Andrea says, uh, the, the consumer doesn't have an idea on, on how uh, a garment is done, no matter if it's sustainable or not, but most of the people don't know how it is done. Uh, yeah. and, and that is, that is I think, a, a thing that you have to do in, a partnership with a brand because the ultimate uh, uh, conversation is between the brand and the consumer. Of course, we that are the players of the industry, we are behind and we give, uh, we have to give the information and like uh, Daniela said, uh, accurate information, uh, uh, measured information uh, by a lab, by a, a certified uh, uh, standard, but we have the obligation to tell the brands how we did it 
and the brands have to have the idea uh, to talk with the consumer or even to involve the players of the industry to talk with the consumer because I believe that uh, together we can do a better job than the government. Also in Portugal, Daniele. <laughs> yeah, Vasco, you're right uh, on this point. And, uh, but uh, the, I think the whole problem that we have in the industry is that our industry is so fragmented, uh, not properly organized. And uh, if you look at the brand side, the retailer side, uh, that has taken a big hit in the last couple of months that we have seen that the big names who are, you know, always talking about so many names, we are talking about sustainability now, um, they have left their supply chain high and dry. So, I mean, the, uh, I think human impact also, human um, aspect of the sustainability has become so important also. Now, I mean, the whole thing is how to get the whole thing organized, uh, for the global industry and coming together and to certain acceptable standards and then probably implement that. I think that is a huge challenge. Yeah. yeah. All right. So uh, I think, uh, Andrea, you already uh, uh, you want to share something else on the previous question. Uh, should we move it? This, my colleague has say a lot of things. I totally agree with them. So I can add anything more. They say everything about machinery. In the last five years, we implement the use of the machinery, the technology. The chemicals changing, changing a lot also. Everything is changing in, in our industry. And uh, let's try to do our best. Let's try to, to invest in uh, research. And uh, let's see. I can say any, any, anything more. They say everything. Thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs> OK. So we move on and uh, uh, to our next uh, question. Uh, so what uh, major, ch you know, so many major changes are coming in apparel production and consumption. So do you think the consumers actually are in a position to demand different kind of washes uh, uh, post the situation what we are facing currently? Or it is up to the industry to offer different alternatives. And also the, the biggest concern the consumers today have is health and safety. So how do we as uh, washing industry address this, you know, of course, uh, there are so many other aspects, the fabric side and the yarn side and the fiber side of those things, but as a washing side, how these concerns can be addressed. So let's say move on to ask Bosco again. <laughs> Me again. <laughs> so um, uh, talking about health and safety, um, we can, in our case, uh, uh, especially to, to I, I, I didn't understand the first part of the question. Uh, so, so I said, uh, you know, basically the uh, washing changes that are required will be demanded by the consumers or it will be decided by the uh, industry, including the designers, it's, the, uh, the retail, retail retailers and the manufacturers. I think the changes in, in washes as um, always uh, to to have uh, to to have to do with the look and the aggressiveness of the of the look in terms of of wash. Um, you've we have seen uh, throughout the years a uh, uh, slowing on the aggressiveness. So uh, a lot of um, of the effects that we it used to be done uh, in other other uh, times like. Uh, uh, 3D whiskering or heavy uh, things kind of uh, slowed down. Uh, we saw we saw uh, 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 changing on a simpler simpler washes, in, especially in, in what we have been we have been seeing in the in the market. Uh, but different kinds of of, of things. Uh, the, the, I think that the, this uh, 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 this will always be a team job. Uh, you have Luca on the creative side. You have Andre on the on the brand side. You have Daniele as I on the player side. Um, the brand always have to transmit us a little bit of their image and what they want to offer to their consumer. Um, that analysis ultimately has to do with uh, what the brand wants to give them. In in our case, we try to be as flexible as possible to have uh, a look, an effect or a process or a product that suits that, uh, that need of the company. So I think it, all, it will always a team uh, 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 effort on the designing of the, of the, we have brands that we present them, they 
based on that, they select what they want. We have the inverse and we have brands that we meet on the middle. Cool. And about the health and safety part? The health and safety part. Um, we ourselves on the on the factory, uh, we especially with with the with the um, the, the pandemic state, we are uh, we are working uh, at fifty percent of our capacity. What we established in the in the company was a, a, a contingency plan, where we outlined uh, guidelines for the workers. Uh, static uh, workers uh, are uh, wearing masks. Mm -hmm protective mask and in a safe uh, uh, distance at at least two meters. Um, and uh, the workers that are not on a, sta a static uh, job that uh, uh, have to, to go around the company use mask and uh, a, a, a PVC uh, uh, mask. Um, uh, so actually, uh, what's, uh, uh, you know, I was coming to was the finishing, the health and uh, safe finishing for the uh, anti people. Uh, what, our, what you say antibacterial processes yes 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 we have what we have uh, 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 using ourselves we are um, uh, partners we are doing partnerships with uh, companies that are uh, working for uh, um, uh, uh, medical uh, staff we are using uh, uh, some of the antibacterial process that we have to to accommodate that in the the uh, garment industry itself, we have not seen nothing more than usual in terms of, of, uh, of the, the normal uh, antibacterial demand, but uh, uh, I don't know how it will, lead, how, how will it will play in the future. Maybe it, it can increase. Okay. And uh, Luca? Uh, let's say uh, concerning uh, who is going to decide who or let's say, in my opinion, uh, brand and industry cannot wait for the final consumer's demand because, uh, you know, final consumer, um, most of them, they don't even know how a garment is made. We know well, we are very sensitive. We know how to make it, uh, how to save water and everything, but final consumers, uh, only a, a part of them maybe are sensitive. They were sensitive to sustainable wash or saving water before this pandemic, and maybe now they're getting more sensitive. But I think the people that didn't care much before, even now, I don't know if they change, maybe little percentage change their mind. So if brands are waiting for market demands on that, these things will take too much or maybe never happen. So in my opinion, our brands and the industry that should take a firm and drastic decision to go in that direction, whatever is the market needs or requirements and uh, this is uh, this is this is what i what i feel let's say then in this uh, uncertain period of time for sure final consumer are looking for a reference a firm reference and uh, what brands can do is transparency or maybe send a uh, communication and message clear understandable for them that uh, they can be assured that this garment is made in a certain way, but start from a sort of, uh, let's say, education that uh, needs to be done because uh, otherwise, uh, uh, I think the, the brands that are better giving this kind of message, they will the, the winner. I mean, who is really doing that? And um, I think concerning the health um, kind of application or finishing, um, let's say, of course, the demand is, is getting higher now. This is something that uh, everybody is uh, asking for, uh, even the brands are working for. And uh, many, many chemical companies, let's say it's a, it's a technology that comes from the sportswear and outwear that can be adapted, or optimized for casual wear. And uh, there are different kind of uh, formulation now in the market. There are some companies that are, were already in providing to sportswear. So they have this, guy, this product already in stock in their store, in their um, range. And uh, other company that now are getting involved and are trying to find an alternative or something uh, to propose. Uh, so there is a lot of uh, action behind that. Of course, uh, what uh, uh, 
what they realized that at the moment uh, the products and chemicals that are silver based are the most powerful in that sense. They say they have they are active uh, as antibacterial but probably antiviral. And uh, but there is a um, certain delay in the um, proposal of this chemical, mostly for the antiviral properties, because uh, it's not easy to certify something like that. And it all depends how some companies um, describe and present this kind of chemical, because uh, not every company is able to provide uh, certain kind of guarantees and certification. So it's something, but there are, chem there are chemical companies that are providing it in a way. Yeah, that will be, I think that will be interesting and probably that is a uh, huge consumer demand for these kind of products and uh, the retailers, this is something which is uh, really push, pushing the retailers to develop something from the machine side, from the fabric side, from the, all the material side. So, uh, Daniel, uh, can you contribute on this? Uh, question? Yeah, I think that if you are talking about the wash image, the wash look, uh, it's a little bit the story of the chicken and the egg. Is the brand producing what the consumer is searching for or is the consumer buying what the brand is producing? So it's a give and take uh, a relationship between the brand and the consumer. Uh, brands are always searching for the latest trends and consumers are always informing themselves on what is available on the market. So it's a two-way relationship. And I don't think that is gonna change in the near future. Uh, consumer are, yes, indeed getting more educated, but they still uh, trust the brands on what is cool, what is gonna be sexy to wear next season, or this kind of decision. What I see, what, what I think is gonna change uh, now, as a direct result of this moment we are living, is the the, the buying opportunity, the, the selling point, the, the purchasing idea, the way we approach the decision to buy one pant instead of the other, or to buy a pant at all. So I think that for what concern the washes in this specific uh, uh, problem, or say, to understand how to sell it to the new consumer, to the post-crisis, post-COVID-19 consumer, is gonna be a shift to more visual, more authentic, more, uh, less boring, let's say, denims, garments, that will sell in two ways. First, in being something interesting, because the consumer is confused, but is also a little bit, I think, I perceive, bored by what he finds in most shops. And secondly, it sells better on the online platform because it's more visual, it, has more, it is more detailed, it is, it, it, it is more photogenic, let's say. So forecasting a shift from the in-shop purchase to the online purchase, maybe, that's gonna be one of the new situation we are gonna see in the laundry, uh, more visual, more visual washes. I so you, think you mean more aggressive washes and uh, yeah, vision. yeah. But of course, this is a random throw of dice. This is what I think is gonna happen. Uh, nobody has a crystal ball, so let's wait and see. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Uh, yeah, prob probably the trend will be also of uh, functional products. I mean, yeah. garment, garment probably, uh, I see a trend that could be um, having a diff specific kind of performance yeah. um, properties like uh, for comfort, for protection, for health, uh, for, uh, I don't know, yeah, I mean, these kind of things. Something that yeah. could be a hybrid coming from the sportswear and then joining the, the casual wear or jeans or, and denim. That's something that probably will just break this, uh, as uh, Daniela said, boring situation, let's say. In my opinion, those kind of uh, um, addiction, uh, injection, let's say, gonna, gonna probably be the future. 
and also also aggravated by the 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 staying at home part you know people are already more bored so when they leave they want to uh, have a, a more flashy uh, thing yes i can i can see that yes more experimental yeah. There is also one thing to add. Uh, now we have to to ask to the customer to go out from the house if they want to go out from the house. It's not easy now because they stay maybe two months in the house with the fear of the virus. And if, like a brand, we have also to say, come to, to our shop and buy our clothes. It, though it's not a very easy because right now there is no regulation, they say, the garments have to sun, uh, have to have a, a sanitification after the the trying of the other people. So we have to thinking also about that because it's not easy for the customer go out and go to a shop to and go like a previous COVID. So it's very good to have something in the market like a new treatment, like an antivirus or antimicrobic, just to give to a customer a little bit more, uh, let's, let's say, safe. You know, they feeling more safe to go out and try something. Then can say, okay, this garment is treated by some antiviral, uh, antivi antiviral product, or antimicrobial product, and I, I don't have any problem to, 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 ch to, ch to, to dress, you no? Know? So I don't, yeah. this one thing. Another thing is so, you are completely right, guys. <laughs> it's not a very good situation, this one. And uh, we are in also in a boring situation, like because we stay at home. We also, the market in the last uh, years is uh, all the brands have the same image, more or less. There is no one very different from the other one. Also, Luca is very, is, is, is right with uh, maybe the, some uh, uh, treatment like antimicrobial antivi antivirus will be the future of our uh, industry. Why not? The problem is also in, the, in this moment, we don't have anything because we have to rewash again uh, the garment we have in, in, the, in the warehouse. How we can do it? So for maybe for the future collection, we can do something, but right now we don't do it. We can do anything. And India, what about uh, water repellent? Uh, are, uh, are the brands and retailers looking for water repellent? Uh, yeah, uh, we are looking, well, also, as I, as I, can I speak like for Seven for All Mankind, we are looking for something for antimicrobial and antivirus, if it's possible. But uh, like Lucas said, it's not easy to, to understand and to know if some products is antivirus. Also because uh, someone told me there is two a lab in the world who made the certification for antivirus, especially for the coronavirus. I'm not really sure about this, I have to check, but someone say me this. And also they need time, like four weeks or four more weeks to receive a reply from the lab. Yeah, but- yeah. I think companies are working on that and doing all, they are, they're working yeah, yeah. right now. I mean, these days they are trying to make it because everybody understand that these are, uh, it's going to be a high demand on that, but of course, yeah. yeah. High demand in the future, not right now, because right now we have in the in the shop the garments. But you can retreat again the garments. It's I, think, I think. This is I think. I think also. Story, of course. Yeah, I think it's also right now you you have uh, you have the logistic challenges on inside the store. So if a person tries on but doesn't suits well or doesn't look nice, uh, uh, that garment has to be. Uh, uh, antibacterized so that another can can try it so the logistic yeah. itself and the fear that people might have on going to the store is a, it's it's uh, always uh, a very very hard to overcome yeah it's not easy so it's not easy right now believe me yeah it is right you know because uh, the comments which are already in the, the shops i mean we can do anything about that but i think uh, there have been some talks probably that uh, uh, retailers which have not been able to sell, sell this summer, you know, and they are kind of re uh, packaging those goods to be sold in the next year. I mean, you know, that there are reports on that. I don't know if those are true. So, I mean, uh, I don't know if that is uh, something which they will look at that if these garments are going to, uh, to next year, so probably we should 
make them more usable in terms of uh, health and safety. Yeah, in the next collection will be the future with something, some treatment in the end, uh, just uh, to uh, to be covered by, by by something that we can uh, take in from the atmosphere or from the other people or bacteria or virus, something like that. Yeah. So uh, I think uh, let's move on to the next question about technologies. Mm -hmm. You know, in last as we already discussed so many technologies which have already been used in the last uh, few years. So do you see any some groundbreaking technologies coming up in the next uh, couple of years where we can uh, uh, you know, which can make a big difference to the denim washing and apparel washing uh, as such. Um, can the panel share views on this? Anyone, I mean, let's say, uh, let's start with uh, Luca. So something new coming out, some new technology you mean? Yeah. I have a, an idea that uh, also the uh, technology that we have right now, right, right now, they still have a lot of space to improve. And um, there are some tools that now you can combine in order to, to get a different effect. At the moment, uh, I mean, what I see, this is my personal um, situation and what I see around me is that uh, we still have to get the best out of uh, laser and nanobubbles and uh, ozone too, because I realized that, uh, for instance, let's talk about ozone. Ozone, in my opinion, uh, need to be set properly. I mean, people is using it just to clean, but if you set properly the intensity of ozone, so uh, how many grams per hour is applying, uh, you can get different kind of effects. So there is still uh, a lot to explore from the from this technology. Laser, of course, in my opinion, still have a lot of uh, graphic designing to improve to make it even better. And, uh, and it's what I said before, more than new technology that at the moment uh, I don't see much, apart uh, the things that may be interesting for uh, sanitizing, as uh, everybody was telling before in the store, that maybe there is no direction so far from governments and everything, how, uh, stores should behave now as soon as they open and they sell the garments. But uh, that kind of new technology may be interesting to so sanitizing the garments inside the stores, that it maybe could be something that uh, it's going to be new. But uh, I still believe that now we still have to improve a lot the existing uh, technology and get out the best of it by combining it. And um, Frankly speaking, I don't see many things. There are a few tools that you can put inside a washing machine to improve. I see, for instance, a uh, uh, washing machine that washing machine producer that developed new drum working, uh, they're able to work with a lower, very low liquid ratio. And that's something that can help, I mean, the sustainable part of our processes. But um, I mean, not many new machine right now. Okay. Vasco? Yeah. So um, I agree I agree with Luke. Uh, there's a lot of uh, road to be uh, done uh, with existing technology. Um, we have uh, we have co-developed with Genealogia the, the zero uh, closed water system that I think it will have a big impact. It has it has been having a big impact in our factory. Um, we are reusing the same water uh, in the washing for uh, 22 days uh, with, uh, with marginal loss of the water in terms of when, when the garments comes out wet. But uh, we are able to, to uh, uh, save on the hundreds of thousands of liters uh, per month. So it, it, in the washing side of it, it has a big impact, uh, but, uh, but it's something that I believe it will be helping. It will be helping other other facilities in the future. Apart from that, uh, I also see uh, um, the the reusing and the the the, the repurposing of the same uh, tech, existing technology, especially ozone. Uh, with the, the Weiser wash, for example, it has been something that's been very well accepted on the on the on the market. Um, 
but I think there's there's a, 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 the, the the part of the medical that we can be explored uh, and uh, machines and processes that allows circularity. So uh, we have programs with the brands on the uh, uh, garments that are on the stores that don't sell. They come to us. We retreat them. We repurpose them. We sell it as a they sell it as a new product. So processes also that allow uh, reusing so the garments won't go to waste or don't get as dead stock that allow circularity that you can see it and the, the brand can profit from it i think that it also is is a road that we can we can uh, uh, go yeah we need to optimize and uh, this uh, zero technology what you mentioned is uh, it uses the water from all kind of washes uh, irrespective of uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 on on the uh, 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 on on the washing facility, and we adapt it as well uh, on some process on the dye house. It's also possible, but not all. Hmm. Some. Okay. This is new, Vasco. Yeah. <laughs> because <okay. laughs> okay, uh, Daniel. Uh, well, uh, it's very interesting what uh, Vasco said about circularity, and I think that is gonna be one of the cooler stuff tomorrow the the circularity prog program because it's the ultimate tool that we have to save resources uh, that of course and uh, create the need for a lot of flexibility from the brand side because a circular product doesn't need only a circular industrial process but needs to be engineered from the beginning as a circular garment. So with certain uh, kind of construction, certain kind of material, uh, a general setup that is uh, that allows the garment to become in the end circular and to go back in the production cycle. Uh, and of course you need a dedicated logistic system to, to treat circularity. So it's not just a matter of how good we are with machines and with rewashing, but it's the system all around the, the, the supplier, the supply chain that needs to adapt to make circularity a reality. Um, another nice new trend that I, that, that I see is the one that really put data to use in the supply chain. Because as of now, as I, as I said before, we are a very uh, we are an industry that is very low on data. Uh, we can get data about the oil industry, the energy companies, whatever. Look about the data, search for the data of the fashion industry. You just see sell in, sell outs, but very little raw data to be used. And I think that the the next big thing happening in the supply chain is the use of software technologies. Um, AI that provide, dig, elaborate data to the supplier, to the user, to the product engineer, and to the brand eventually to make the process better, learning from the data that we are now ignoring. I think uh... not, not everybody is ready for that. And it's a huge uh, technological investment. But I think my personal approach is that data is king. With, you get what you measure. Without data, you don't go anywhere. And right now, we are really, really poor on that. Yeah, it right. helps transparency, probably. Yeah, right. Transparency, yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, data is, uh, you know, artificial, artificial intelligence and data, these are, uh, I think these are going to be critical. Specifically, uh, when uh, and and I think this will become more important because we are moving to e-commerce uh, in a big way. So probably we might have better data than we had before. Uh, also, as you know, one of uh, my friends uh, pointed out in one of the talks that you know one thing which we as fashion industry is uh, that we are not attra attracting the best talent uh, uh, which is available in the market. Let's say which uh, software industry there are. IT industry is attracting or other industries are attracting. So we also probably, uh, you know, uh, need to attract better talent. I mean, of course, we are all very good, but yes, uh, 
you know when uh, if you talk to young people uh, many people are you know more inclined towards your more high tech industry so we as uh, daniel said if we are going more towards data more toward high tech you know we are actually creating conditions for uh, uh, much better talent to come to our industry andrea you want to say anything else no what can i say yeah yeah i'm uh, totally agree with luca uh, right now we have a lot of uh, new tech say no no new technology we have the, the technology and we have to invest in this technology that we have we have to grow up with, with this technology and try to have the best of this technology because i think we can do a lot of things with uh, the machinery and the technology that we have right now in the market uh, after also the circularity yeah is a good point it's not easy to to do with all of all of kind of brands not everyone can do this depends also which type of brands that you are which which type of customer uh, are you looking for is a very good is the, is the uh, ideal word uh, circularity no recycle all the material recycle all the denim and reuse and recreate something but it's not easy <laughs> and uh, no, 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 no. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe maybe uh, I can I can share my experience that I have with the Uniqlo, for instance. That uh, I don't know, Sandeep. Can I? Sure, sure, sure. Please. Okay. Just just for years, and uh, Uniqlo and its group uh, they invested a million dollars in a R and D center internal, like R and D center, just. Uh, to create their, their own uh, um, sustainable process with some uh, clear targets, so saving water uh, up to 95, 99% comparing with the conventional processes without pinstone, without any manual operations, uh, with, uh, with a very minimum amount of uh, chemicals in use, uh, and uh, all these kind of things. That was the target, and they invest a lot internally to create the process, and in the three, four years, um, combining this technology that everybody is mentioning that uh, we have right now, we work it and uh, make all our efforts to get out the best of it. And combining uh, these uh, new generation of chemical and their characteristic, because uh, some of them, they may perform less than the, the bad one, let's say the old one, but uh, um, if combined with this technology, maybe working with the pH, some chemical are working that maybe are is boosting the ozone machines and the, the ozone in their process. So combining these kind of things, uh, we were able to 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 create a, and match our target. And now, just talking about the organization, how can be possible to be um, sustainable for a big brands is that what uh, uh, Uniqlo is doing is to create this process, scale it in production, make it consistent and transfer it to their contractors. Um, let's say uh, with the contractors, Uniqlo has a very strong relation. It's almost a sort of, uh, let's say, let's call it partnership. And these contractors are buying the same technology we are using in, uh, in the R&D center in order to scale it exactly what we are doing. Uh, sometimes uh, being big, as Uniqlo it is, uh, is good to create a system uh, that it's, uh, it's, uh, it's saving uh, all that amount of water and energy and make it sustainable. This is something that uh, helps. So the organization is also something that helps. Something that probably for small brands is more complicated, but for big brands like that, maybe they have more power to, with thanks to the big numbers they have in production or something like that. Something that probably after COVID may slightly change the organization, but uh, for sure is helping also to cut some costs or make uh, sustainable um, garments, uh, sustainable yeah garments uh, in with with a. Uh, with a settable price, because uh, that's uh, that's I think is the big challenge in the market right now. Do sustainable with a with a low price and with a, with Same a certain price kind of the normal. Yeah, because right now the challenge is to have sustainable washing with the same price of the old one or cheaper if it's possible. But right now the market sometimes they say sustainable is more expensive than the normal one. I don't really agree about this because 
I don't really. It's true. But from my experience, I can say sustainable is more expensive. It's more expensive than the normal one, because if you use the right technology, you know how to use the chemicals and the technology together. Like Lucas said, you can save a lot of money also in the production side. Yeah, I mean. Uh, can I add, can, can yeah, I add yeah. something to, yeah, to this last uh, thing? Because it's really interesting. Personally, me and Andrea have already spoken about it in the in the past yeah. so i'm quite interested uh, of course sustainability is about resource efficiency if i am resource efficient then i'm spending less because i have less input to do a single a single process this is true on a certain scale this is true when sustainability is at full speed let's say when sustainability will be the standard the operational standard in the processes all around the industry yes a sustainable garment will be cheaper than a non-sustainable one until that moment or un until a certain level of widespreading of sustainable processes i think it's still gonna be a little bit more expensive than the standard one uh, in the last 10 years we have seen the prices of sustainable product and standard product getting closer to each other. Uh, I remember then in 2011 or 2010, we as LT we proposed our first uh, eco collection. We called it the Earth Keepers, and the prices were almost double compared to the one of the traditional washes. Now, if I see uh, a medium range wash sustainable and his brother unsustainable, I, on average, the, the difference should be no higher than 15 to 20%. It's still a huge amount of money because it should be cheaper technically, but only when we scale it up to a certain level. Yeah. Also, also, I would, I would like to add, Daniele, uh, that um, uh, to be, of course, sustainable, to develop new processes, new product, new from the beginning to the end of the of the player of the of the value chain. Um, if you spend the time and money in development, if you spend time or not this time, but money in new technology, of course, that in the first. Uh, 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 until you have a, a, a payback or, or, or a sense of it, um, it can be expensive because, as you know, uh, a laser machine, a ozone machine, all uh, are not they are not uh, uh, um, cheaper. Uh, cheaper. Uh, cheaper. So yeah, in a short term, is not uh, yeah, is not the use, but in a long term, yes, yes, in the long term, even yes, even it's a huge investment. Is a huge investment in the beginning, but in the long term, reduce water, reduce time, of reduce course. everything. Of yeah, course, yeah. it has to be a it has to be a calculated investment. Of course, yeah. but but I think that uh, uh, um, especially uh, uh, people that don't know what it costs to develop something uh, uh, um, like you did, for example, when you develop new uh, 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 chemicals or new processor or the, the people that are around the industry and don't understand that cost, they are the ones that doesn't understand that sustainable can be on the first stage, higher price than, than a, 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 a non traditional watch. And the whole challenge is now, yeah. Daniel, you want to add something? Uh, yeah, uh, just a little extra. Uh, we said that most of the uh, sustainability that we can do in washing is somehow dependent on the technology level available. If we are playing in a market with shrinking and shrinking margins, and I think that everybody can accept yes. that as true, we are cutting out other players from the possibility to buy this technology. We are creating some gray area of low of low performance companies that cannot afford to become sustainable or to stay sustainable because are they are lacking the margin to purchase the new technology 
So at a certain point, we should ask ourselves, why do I really need a lower price? Or do I really need a lower price? Isn't it healthier for the whole value chain? I'm not talking about the single supplier, but for the whole value chain to leave more value to be reinvested in the processes, which I will, in the end, uh, use me as a brand uh, later on. I agree completely, Daniel. Yeah, I agree that we should not be completely depending on machineries. And that what I said at the beginning of this webinar is that uh, machinery may help, but you have to use the brain too, I mean, to make it. Because uh, most, I mean, technology, maybe let's say nanobubble, for instance, it's expensive, you have to apply it with the washing machine, maybe you have to buy also the washing machine and there's something like that. But uh, you cannot use that kind of technology for every process. It's gonna be even worse than, uh, than, uh, than the standard ones because uh, you waste a lot of time and filling and uh, draining the tank, cleaning the tank and do it. I mean, it's, it's impossible. Most of the time, I th I'm, more, I'm more keen to do three processes in one in a normal condition with a, with a, with a safe, in normal uh, liquid ratio, and, uh, but just using maybe also less chemical, but the right chemicals. And you save rid a lot of water and you make it without a big investment. Maybe it may help uh, a washing machine with a specific kind of drum. Maybe, but I think a laundry can buy a new machine or sometimes you have to renew their existing machine and they can buy one of that. It's not an investment out of this uh, world or the fantasy. It's something that happens. Um, personally, I don't like when market is becoming completely technology addicted. This is uh, something that uh, uh, we are doing the play. We are playing the game of the <laughs> machine producer. They are doing a great job, absolutely. But we have to be balanced in that. I understand, yeah. and uh, I agree with Daniela. I mean, it's, uh, so we should talk for hours. I know, in order to clarify <laughs> every, aspect, every aspect. But uh, sometimes, uh, I mean, uh, sustainability at the end is uh, you calculate at the end of the complete washing formula how much you saved. Doesn't need to have a machine. You can be so uh, brilliant to make it also without technology, but at the end of the day, the numbers should be what testify that you, do, you did sustainable. I mean, this without uh, huge technology. Technology helps, but we should be balanced in the use of them also, because uh, sometimes it could be something uh, with some drawbacks that can be bigger than the, the, the pros. Is good. If you can add something more, like sustainability for me is also optimization of process. Exactly. Yeah. That's true. Anything which uh, reduces resource usage is sustainability and optimizes the resource. Sorry, I, 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 didn't, I didn't understand. Sorry. Anything which optimizes the resource utilization is, I think we can say it's yeah, optimization or every, optimization of everything, like uh, process, uh, chemical, everything. Is all combined in the end. True. Uh, so we have a lot of questions coming from the participants and the people who are uh, attending this seminar webinar. So uh, uh, let me try to take a couple of questions. Uh, this yep. question is uh, from Laura Dixon. Oh, I, I think this we already discussed some part of it, but let me repeat it again. Uh, Laura Dixon, uh, to all we have been uh, talking for years about what we should have one centralized certification body in the industry. So we are all working towards the same goal. But who will be the ones to lead this? At some point, there needs to be action, not just words. Uh, I can take, anybody this. can take this. Yeah, uh, did you not get the question? No. Okay, let me repeat it again. Uh, we have been talking for years uh, about how we should have one centralized certification body in the industry. So we are all uh, for the sustainability. And so we are all working towards the same goal. But who will be the ones to lead this? At some point, there needs to be some action and not just words. So anybody in the panel, please. Uh, I think um, the ones that are not afraid. Because as Daniela said, maybe we should be uh, put the view aside of the uh, competitors and start working together 
uh, and uh, talk to each other. Because the ones that will always be afraid of the, uh, a competitor to know a secret or to know this or to know that, I think the ones that will not be afraid will be the ones that lead it. True. I mean, uh, but I mean, you know, we need to, I, I mean, this uh, question is very relevant because there has to be some kind of global body which uh, has to come yeah, up. There in are, some... Sandeep, there is, there are in the, in our business, something like they, they try to combine uh, different kind of certification. I don't know. Example is IG. Is a, a platform IG, where yeah, yeah, yeah. a lot of brands also, they join and then mm -hmm. they try to have uh, they try to follow like uh, one part is for the labor part and one part is for the environmental part this is um, could be a solution mm -hmm. something so, like that. Yeah. there are some coalition let's say exactly yeah. like uh, like sac i think you're talking about that sustainable operate coalition yeah that is so. helping uh, all brands and uh, retails to in the, in the upper hill to gather together, help each other in order to get uh, a clear guideline with a, with a index uh, that to follow in order to, to make it. But it needs a coalition, otherwise it's, there is too much segmentation and it's only confusing. And this is, a, I agree with Vasco, I mean, this is a necessary in order to speak the same language. And if we speak the same language, people can understand that language. Otherwise, we, it's like a, a Portuguese, an Italian, <laughs> in <and then you, laughs> their own language, and we don't understand each other. <laughs> That's true. Uh, so I, we uh, come to another question. Uh, uh, I mean, this is uh, regarding you know sustainable washes again. Uh, what is the most sustainable wash you have done till now? Ah, uh, okay. Oh, look up. <laughs> no, I mean it's 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 again uh, what the I've been working on sustainable washes for the last uh, ten years, and mostly in the last three years, uh, I went much deeper working with the Uniqlo. And uh, the most sustainable one is where we um, uh, let's say we uh, just to be a little bit more technical. We don't, uh, we dry the garment only once. So means one, the, the garment touch the water only, only once. Combining together the first processes in, uh, in all the same bath. Uh, we create at the beginning a, a particular laser design that uh, um, looks really real without the requirements to apply lately a second application of uh, laser or, or in the old school uh, potassium permanganate and uh, and at the end of the process uh, we we were able to save uh, 95 percent of water comparing with the conventional uh, with the conventional uh, process uh, comparing with what is made in china or with uh, the older uh, liquid ratio let's say in use this is uh, something so combining a uh, good laser design um, and uh, working with just, I think, uh, three different chemicals. That's it. All sustainable, all listed in the ZDHC MRSL. And this is something that is uh, very sustainable, in my opinion. When you use the same bath for, uh, and normally in a conventional way, you use nine baths, getting the same results is something uh, amazing. And of course, uh, without compromising the look, that is important thing. So otherwise, there's no sense. One of the most important things is this: have the same look, but and save uh, time, money, water, and energy. But I realize also that uh, using certain kind of technology that I cannot tell because uh, some of the uh, process we do for Uniqlo, of course, are secret. Let's say, but. Uh, I realize we are getting uh, even a better look because also without using pumicestone, the look of the garment look much more clear, clean, and you still have uh, visible the structure of the fabric, and it gives a nice, uh, very nice look. So I see improvement, not only uh, compromising the, the aesthetic look, but I see an improvement. This is something uh, me and the team are proud of it. I mean, this is something yeah. I. I 
I can share with you. I am um, talking about it, about this specifically, is something that uh, I normally uh, joke a little bit with the clients with more trust and with the, with the, the team here. Because um, when we say sustainable wash, it's, it's very, it's, it's so vague with the, so many variables on this. Uh, and like, like uh, Luca said, it, 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 of course, it, we are, when we are talking about a mid wash, a mid range look wash or a bleach wash or a, or a raw, or a, depends a lot of things. But um, we, uh, we separate what we call sustainable because uh, from what is eco-friendly. What is, in our opinion, what we consider it truly sustainable is something that doesn't use chemicals, that use the less amount of water and energy, that, that is really, really sustainable. Um, of course, w when we talk about eco-friendly, uh, we can talk about so many things. I think that talking about this is subjective because we can do a uh, rings wash terribly unsustainable and we can do a bleach wash terribly and very good for everyone involved so i think it's a, it's a matter on how you use resources i agree with with andrea i i really like the the the, um, the input luca told about this and the 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 the, the, the partnership with uniqlo and I believe a lot in this in this kind of way to to do work, but it's it's really it's really it really depends on the look that you want and the amount of resources that you that you excel on it. Deep, you are in mute. Sorry, Daniel, do you want to add something? Mm, I don't know. I I have to thinking about which type of washing. <laughs> No, like I say, right now we are focused. I, okay, my new experience is working with Seven. Now we are launching our uh, 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 sustainable washing. We call it kind of planets. We try to use uh, one of the more one of the most sustainable fabric in the market with less uh, chemicals, less water, less energy. And uh, one of one of our goal is to achieve the same look of the normal. Seven for mankind uh, washing garments in this way, and sometimes it's not easy because uh, uh, we have to uh, achieve uh, what the consumer, what the what our customer wants, and uh, we have to to find a balance between uh, the sustainable one and the the final result. Let's see. I'm happy to. It's a it's a very is a very good uh, challenge for us. Anybody else on this question? Well, uh, about uh, the most sustainable wash that we can do. Uh, I think that it's kind of a pointless discussion, if you allow me, because uh, I, I could go on a couple of hours with all of you talking about uh, our sustainable line. We have probably done it already in some different shows but that is kind of pointless because the most sustainable pant is the one we didn't produce because we didn't uh, use any resource so if that's the goal my most sustainable pants is the one that has been produced by my competitor because i didn't use any of my resources what i do care about uh, sustainability in our treatments is that any pants that I am producing now is on average more sustainable than the pants that I was producing yesterday. Because sustainability is a matter of uh, processes, attitude, and way to handle the treatment and the resources involved in the process. So it's a, pro it's a process itself. So anything being produced at our facility today is more sustainable than anything that we were producing two years ago not even to compare with 10 years or 20 or 30 years ago so 
that is what I really care about sustainability, not to show you a garment saying, okay, this is done with zero water or whatever. We can do that. We all can do here because we, we, it's our job to do that. But it's the average garment that counts for me. Thank you, Daniel. That's very yeah. appropriate. I mean, you know, because if we are doing sustainable washing in all the production that we are doing, that, that's the most sustainable thing. And we take a final question from the audience, uh, which is from Sally Ditton. Uh, if you had to choose one technology from all the new machines and methods, which do you believe is making the biggest difference? Sorry, Sandeep, can you repeat the question? I uh, This is a question by Sally. Uh, if you had to choose one technology from all the new machines and methods available currently, which, okay. do, you, which yeah. do you believe is making the biggest difference? If, if we are talking about a new technology, I have no, to no, choose no. zero. We are talking about existing ones. Uh, existing, I think ozone can be the most flexible one and not yet charted. Not yeah, we have, to invest, we have to invest in uh, research in this. Yeah. I yeah. Ozone looks like the technology that so far we didn't explore it completely. I mean, this is the common uh, idea. I mean, yeah, it's doing something. I'm sure they can, it can do more than that. But <laughs> so probably that could be the future. In my opinion, uh, the more flexible is uh, um, laser because laser yeah. is, uh, is, I mean, is graphic. So you can, you have more space to work than probably. Yeah, because, it's a, because it's a software. Yeah, yeah. Probably, probably is that. If you are talking about uh, only technology, in my opinion, technology. Uh, yes. that one. Yeah, because also if, if, more it, if you think, if you think about a uh, nebulization system, there is some limit at the moment. And I think if there is, you have to combine a chemical company and the machinery to find a solution, because right now there is some limits for some application. And, um, and, and uh, I, I, I'm bleeding saying that because I, I'm a lover of the hand sanding. Andrea knows. <laughs> and I like uh, designing with my hands, but I have to say that Concerning technology, yeah, laser, and laser because uh, I I I am witness of it because uh, I I start working with laser in two thousand and one, uh, and and I see that uh, it, I mean software is improved a lot in the sense, but and I see that if you invest time or maybe also company can invest on graphic designers, you are able to improve a lot what you're getting. Yeah. I was always thinking laser is giving a fake look. Fake look needs some end sending to improve. But in the last couple of years, uh, I've seen such a big improvement also. Uh, me designing uh, with uh, different layers and different adjustment, but needs time, I know, needs time and to dedicate it. But I am witness of what this machine can do. And it's doing uh, a lot of amazing things and uh, getting very close to it's a different kind of technique because uh, and sending or something like that is a physical abrasion, while uh, laser is just a sublimation of uh, indigo. So the look is a bit different, but working with uh, layers, working uh, and studying more the, 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 what's happening between uh, the laser beam and the fabric, it's, um, it gives uh, good satisfaction, in my opinion. This is something that still have to be explored more, but uh, gives a lot of uh, ideas and uh, way to work. Oh. Anybody else on this? Okay. Yeah, so we have, like, like, like Lucas say, we have, we, have to, we have to study more the fabric and the reaction with the laser. This is the most important things, I think, because, uh, Everybody can laser a garment, but laser in a proper way, no one right now. Because like, say, like Lucas said, that the laser, everybody here say laser is a fake uh, uh, result in the end. But if you invest in design, if you invest in people like graphic designer, and if you invest also in study the materials so or the fabric and also how the laser work on the, 
on this specific, specific fabric with this specific dyeing, we can create uh, something amazing. True. And uh, one more uh, question that has come up is, uh, you know, uh, there have been a lot of talk about uh, near shoring, uh, where uh, the tailors might be more interested in having their production uh, closer to the place where they're located, where they're selling. So do you think, uh, do you see that in coming, uh, uh, let's say one year or two years, do we see, uh, let's say laundries being set up in uh, uh, Europe and US uh, closer to uh, the retailers where they can, you know, get uh, goods, uh, unwashed goods and uh, get them washed close to their centers and uh, get a, you know, faster uh, uh, catering to the demand of the market. I hope. Mm. Yeah, I mean, no, this it, is also this also uh, sorry, Luca. Sorry, this sorry. is also something that relating to sustainability also, because if imagine we produce in China and then we sell in uh, in US, what is the sustainability? You lost everything in terms of shipment and in terms of other things. Yeah, the best and the the best way is uh, produce in Asia and sell in Asia, produce in Europe and sell in Europe producing in American and selling Americas. This is the best of, the best idea world. All right, so. I have a dream. My dream is to, no, my dream, I mean, something I love is uh, the increase of uh, local brands that probably now are hoping economy will uh, support it. <laughs> But uh, um, local brands with things made, uh, maybe with also small numbers, despite I'm working for Uniqlo and other things, but uh, I, I love and all those small brands that are working locally. I see also in Italy, uh, brands that are, that's been created to work uh, with uh, the Italian um, industry, everything is made in Italy, very authentic, uh, very, that's also a way of sustainability, I have to say. And, uh, I, and I'm really happy to support, for instance, this kind of brands, because I, I, I love this kind of transparency and genuine kind of way to produce, instead of producing exactly abroad and then sent back and all these kind of logistical things. This is something that, uh, in my opinion, I personally love it, for instance. But for big organization, I don't think it will be feasible in a way. It's not easy. I, I agree with Luca. Uh, it would be nice to see some reshoring sooner or later, but as of today, it's nothing but wishful, wishful thinking. Mm -hmm. I mean, the consumer is too, is got, has got too used to a cheap product, cheap just talking about price level. Not that it needs to look a bit, look to be, <clears throat> I'm very sorry. Not that, not a product that looks cheap or is cheap, but, but, but just a product with a low price point. So if we reshore in Europe all the production for Europeans, the end people will be quite upset about the average increase of the price of the stuff they are purchasing. And they will not purchase it at all, probably because who can afford now after a crisis that comes after a 10 years long crisis, the, the price of a fully European made garment. Very little people, not so many, only the luckiest of us. Mm. So yeah. I think that the global supply chain is there to stay and is yeah. serving its purpose well because it's giving everybody the opportunity to buy something nice and which is a great result from an industry point of view. Of course, we should also look a little bit, a little bit back in our homes. So reassure what is possible to be reassured, knowing that the supply chain will stay global for long and long and long again. Or maybe something more. Something. Sorry, sorry. It's yes, I'm no, there, yes. So, so, so maybe, or maybe something more easy is uh, to create uh, more warehouse of brands, because right now almost brands have one, only one warehouse in the world where all the the goods 
arrive and then ship to the to the rest of the world. Maybe it's much better to create different warehouses located in different uh, different parts of the world, and you can uh, use for the market. It's maybe even much mm. better. In uh, in my opinion, uh, I I agree in part with with uh, what Daniela said. Um, I think that this will always be dictated by uh, the level of price uh, on the markets. Um, in Portugal, we've we've been uh, uh, witnessing uh, a lot of comeback from uh, high-level brands. Um, and of course, uh, that's that's a, a, a target that, as Daniela said, the lucky of uh, of all of us can can buy. But we have also uh, worked, and we still work with the brands that have a global uh, a global uh, scale uh, a global scale uh, uh, value chain. So I think in the end. Um, it will always depend on the information that the client has and the, what the consumer is able to buy, having uh, in mind all the uh, uh, um, uh, uh, items in what costs on, on, a, on a brand and what is and ultimately able to pay for him. Sure. Uh, I agree with you, Oscar and Daniel. So that is uh, going to be, you know, because price point is always going to remain important and specifically after this crisis, uh, it may become more important. But of course, simultaneously, we might see some quantities, you know, uh, as Luca said, you know, if some kind of small brands coming up and uh, catering to the local market, I mean, that might, we that might would be see, nice. I mean, that's a dream. It's a dream, but we might, uh, it is the possibility that it might happen that way. So uh, before we close, I just want to have your, uh, you know, if you have any message for the denim community, that would be nice if you can uh, share anything else uh, you want to share with the uh, denim community. Now, for me, just want to share that it was a, a pleasure to know uh, Daniela, to see again Luca, to see again Andrea. Uh, hopefully, in the future, we can we can meet each other again. That everyone stays in safe. Life. That, uh, yes, in life. That. Uh, <laughs> The families uh, stay safe, and and that um, that you guys. Uh, uh, it's a real pleasure to uh, to have talk with you. Yeah, good. All right. So I mean, I think this was a wonderful discussion, and it was a real. It was my pleasure that uh, you all uh, agreed to join the panel on, and specifically on a short notice, and uh, shared your uh, you know deep insights on uh, what uh, in which way the washing is moving. Of course, uh, as you all said, that sustainability is, has been and is going to remain uh, the most important thing and that direction is uh, undisputed. And of course, uh, we have to talk about uh, you know, uh, removing the greenwashing part which is there in the industry and uh, data software and technology, all these things become very important. Collaboration, as uh, Luka, you mentioned about uh, you know, how Uniqlo is working, probably I think in, Future, we need to have more collaborations rather than uh, buyer supplier relationships, probably which will make, you know, which will uh, probably not uh, help in uh, not repeating these kind of situations what you've seen in the last two months uh, when uh, the, uh, the participants are deeply invested into each other. So we will not see this kind of uh, sorry state of affairs what you've seen in the last couple of months. So, and of course, health is uh, very important. Health and uh, and I think the industry is already looking in, uh, you know, working hard towards that, at uh, how we can provide better health to our apparel products, finishing through finishings, through the fabrics, through the fibers and other things. So I think that is a very important direction. So I really thank you all of you for joining and having a wonderful discussion. And uh, for all the participants who are here, uh, I would like to thank them also. And uh, there have been so many questions, but unfortunately we can't take all those questions. So let's hope we can take up some of these questions later on uh, in the next session. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. You. Bye bye. Thank bye, you. bye guys.